So we have it on the lift now, and we actually get to see underneath it. So the last build, we didn't have a chance to see what you guys did, but wow, it is just as clean underneath it as it is everywhere else. There's just so much to dive into, but the thing that really stands out for me is this. Yep. So then this is one of the main differences between the previous build, huh? Correct, correct. So the whole floor tub is carbon fiber. So we start with a complete carbon fiber shell, then underneath the floor, we have some reinforcing. We have a layer of Kevlar in there. We have foam core and then aluminum over that. So you get a nice solid platform and then sound deadening to go with it. This begs the question, well, did you actually start with a real vehicle? Yeah, yeah. So all of our cars are, there is a donor to the vehicle. Um, what we retain are two important things, the substructure, because this is a full carbon car again, and then the VIN number. That's it? That's it. But how much of the substructure is left on this vehicle? Yeah, so if you look outside, what you would see, if you were to peel the quarter panel off and the roof off, you would see the metal substructure and all the way up to the A-pillars and the front door jam. There's a new firewall, there's a rear new trunk support, everything in between. That is so crazy. So, I, so then everything else, like th this entire part is carbon, but is this all new yes. that you guys have to create? Correct. It's a frame that we designed and built in-house. That's our Gen 3 frame. So we can accomplish the geometries that we desire for offsets, widths, lengths, things of that sort. So then like the pickup points for some of this stuff, mm -hmm. that is special that's one off for you guys like you guys actually created correct. this geometry correct so uh, of course we purchased the nine inch rear end but the boot assembly that holds the shocks and the four link that's all designed built in house so every piece of metal when you look at even a cross member like this so you're looking at one two three four five six pieces not including the mounts just for that piece alone so when it comes to the frame construction, it's box construction. So it starts out as flat sheet, and then it is assembled like a box would be, top, bottom, and the sides. This is what's amazing to me. I mean, the, the craftsmanship, the welding, I just can't believe how clean it is. And on top of that, what is this? Is this That's like all a, steel. Well, well, what is this finish? Oh, regular automotive paint. Oh, yep. okay. Yep. We use the BASF products. So then how did you guys even figure this out? What, is this all drawn in CAD before? Yeah. Or? yeah, so basically we start out by scanning an original car. So from that we establish our exterior parameters and then we can build from within, knowing what we want for track width, what we're looking at for steering, for suspension travel, and then design from there. And so a lot of this is based off of what you guys have built before, what works, what doesn't work, pretty much putting down all of that power to these fat 345s. Correct. So then what's going on with this setup here? Yeah, so what we have here, that's an electric parking brake. So what the electric parking brake does is simplify the setup for us. We use a, a Brembo caliper here, and this is a Willwood caliper, and because they're off brands, we designed a custom bracket to accommodate that. I love that you guys went out of your way to put your logo on this, <laughs> even though literally nobody's gonna see it except for us. <laughs> we had to put it on a lift just to look at it. Well, details, right? Yeah. So Magnaflow exhaust. Correct. I love how clean the exit is. It's just so clean. It's very well integrated with this uh, rear bumper or rear valence area here. Mm -hmm. So this is all carbon too. That is correct. You could see a little bit of that just because the tab here. Yep, mount point. Yeah, the mounting point, that is really neat. Talk about a flex though. All carbon, mm -hmm. all painted. What an absolute flex. Just leaving the rear tail panel, exposed V-weave. It's a nice little accent and complements the hood that's carbon as well. So then underneath all of this, it is just as clean as that. Yeah, weave. absolutely. Yeah. Like, like what we've seen in the previous build. Correct. Correct. So then uh, 
gas tank Correct. behind here. Yep. Is it Just something that you guys created by uh, on, on your own own Correct. your own design? Yep, designed and fabricated in house. Amazing. So, and that's uh, something about a build like this is every nut and bolt, every piece of hardware that you can think of, every component of these are, is constructed new. It's just so cool to see the, the, the way you guys did the heat shielding around here because th it's carbon underneath here too. Correct. And what about this transmission, all of this? I can't believe you guys <laughs> painted all of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, so clean. And what about this? Is this something you guys designed too? Yep, the, correct. That's the front, front cross member. Cross member area. So you pick up your double wishbone suspension. So you see the upright going up to the sh top pivot points, shock mounting point, and that's all calculated in when we're designing the frame. When we look at roll center, we look at turning radius, we look at track width. And then, so how different is the front suspension versus stock? Uh, yeah, everything's cool. changed. Oh yeah, everything has changed, exactly. So, Bensky coilovers, two-way adjustable. Big Brembo brakes, obviously. Oh, I really hope the owner appreciates all of this stuff that went into it. it it's, it's just so crazy, even down to the sway bar. Like, how neat is this? The way you guys mounted the sway bar, it's so cool. Yeah, it's all about that integration. From underneath here, you can see the down tube for part of the roll cage that ties into the front of the car. And because the other- Oh, this? Yep. Yeah. So that, that ties into the main cage with, uh. within the compartment. So it all ties together. You know, not only offering safety, but some structural strength as well. Yeah, you can really see all the carbon where some of the panels meet mm -hmm. too. Yep, so that's the B side. So. Carbon is laid up in what's called an open mold, so your smooth surface is on the outside. Huh. Really, really neat. What about this steering setup? Is this uh, sourced from somewhere else? Correct. That's uh, from Woodward, Woodward Steering. And basically it's a, a racing rack. So it provides to us all the ratios, the speeds that we need, also the strength. This exhaust setup is insane too. So did you guys do all this stuff in-house? Uh, yes, you guys correct. Do all this stuff Hand fabricated house? headers and exhaust all the way back. I can't believe the clearance. It's so close. <laughs> that is correct. Oh, it's so pretty. It really is like jewelry right here. Mm -hmm. Just this portion, just yeah. the cut, just to make it move just a little bit over like that. Tiny transitions. So you know, cause clean. Because you, you are, you're working around steering arms so there's a spool valve for the steering to make your way around that and of course you gotta hook around the bell housing unbelievable what a build did you guys make this oil pan custom too uh no we do purchase that and that's a, a milledon but we do have to manipulate it to mm. get over our cross member here Got it. Last time I had a chance to shoot with you guys was all the way back in, was it 2018? Uh, 2018, yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably uh, August. But uh, I actually went all the way to Wisconsin to shoot with you guys, but now you're here in Southern California. Yeah, nice, warm, sunny Southern California. So this weekend, you're actually debuting this car at the Grand National Roaster Show, which I've had a chance to shoot many, many times. But uh, this is your latest build. What are we actually looking at? So it's a 70 Dodge Charger, bespoke everything. What's left of us <laughs> Dodge Charger. Yeah, let's see. Well, we've got front marker lights and signals. Then we talk about the substructure. We kind of touched on that earlier where beneath the carbon fiber body is the original metal structure from the door jams, rockers, through the quarters, and across the package tray and the roof. And that's it. So a custom firewall, everything else in between is 
custom, designed and built. So this is, this has more carbon than your previous build. Uh, various cars, yeah, because with this car, it's got the whole carbon under tray. So the whole floor pan is carbon. So then, uh, is this carbon? Carbon. This is carbon? Yes. Yes. And this is carbon? Yep, the whole body is carbon. In the roof? Correct. And the quarters? Correct. So we have an autoclave that's big enough to support laying up the whole quarter from a pillar all the way to the tail so it's a it's a large autoclave because all our carbon fiber is aerospace grade cured in our autoclave wow so you did retain some of the like or actually pretty much most of the stock design yes. elements yeah correct correct as far as changing the, the lines we did not these are the original lines of the car but like drip rails, all that stuff, Correct. you guys removed. Deleted flush glass, trimless glass, so reducing the opening. Um, it's still stock glass, shape and size. Is this wider than stock at all? No. Of course, the track width is from a wheel standpoint, front rear, but the car itself, no. It's original dimensions. And then so it, the track width, even though it's wider, it, it's still able to have full uh, like you can steer all the way correct, from end correct. to end. Yeah, the turning radius is similar. Huh. So, and that's part of designing the frame in-house and doing a steering study, looking at all the factors that would pertain to that. Um, the Hemis are rather large, they're tall, they're wide. So we really have to work around that. And so then uh, the grill is different correct. from your previous build. Yep, correct. This is, is this like a one-off thing for yep. each build? or Correct, what? correct. So it's a, a common surround and then the aluminum inserts we modify and tweak per project. What a car. So all of this, even the bottom part, all of that is carbon? Correct. And then you just do one piece at a time for the car in your own autoclave? Correct. Yeah, so we have a full carbon department, so we have a series of molds that we're working with, and they go into the schedule, and we start creating panels. So does any of, is this, any of this stuff for sale individually, or is this just for the cars that you actually build? Uh, no, we do retail some of the bits and pieces. Uh, the hood is, fits a stock car. Um, fenders fit a stock car. So much detail, even down to this you guys create. Correct. And this is just out of one solid piece of aluminum? Yep. Yeah, a lot of the pieces on the car that you see on the exterior and of course the interior are billet pieces. What is this here? So that's the standard turn signal that's integrated into the hood on these cars. That's Oh, just so you, the, as the driver can see. Yeah, that's if factory. The turn signal's on. Yeah, mm. they did that way back in 70. It is just such a long vehicle. <laughs> yeah, they are. People forget how long they made these cars. Oh my goodness. What a build. This is crazy. So all of this, how did you design this? Is this all in CAD right here? Yeah, correct, correct. So basically scan, 3D scan everything, and then go through the concept rendering phase. It's just- And then start modeling. It's cool because there's so much, I mean, you're obviously displaying so much, mm -hmm. but it's just that really modern shaved look, but it's all carbon fiber. Correct. Right, the vanity valve covers, those are carbon as well. Huh. So what motor is this? That's a, a slightly modified Hellcat. So right around 700 horsepower. Um, owner of the car wasn't looking for gobs of horsepower, and this is a great platform to work with. Yeah, but this is still what, how much more power is this versus the stock motor that came in this? Oh, than the stock motor? Yeah. Ah, uh, gosh, I think those stock motors were less than 300 horsepower. So depending on which one you got, of yeah, course. Yeah, so this is probably almost three times the power. Yeah, which huh. is pretty significant, you know, but everything else in the car is built to support that performance. So then is this, 100% stock, like un, uh, uncracked motor? Correct, yeah, this is a crate motor. You know, obviously the custom headers on it, custom tune, custom mirror box. 
And, and then, so is it using the stock ECU? It is stock ECU, but pro reprogrammed, of course. Reprogrammed, got it. Yeah. This is really neat too. You guys made your own little covers here too. Mm -hmm. I love the color too. I mean, it, it is uh, like a monochrome from the outside, right? Carbon fiber, black wheels, white painted carbon, but then you, you got a splash of color mm -hmm. in the engine bay. But you know, even things right down to the tank covers the caps, that's all custom designed and machined from billet. <laughs> I just can imagine like the, the tolerance for you guys to do all this stuff and everything's all centered. Mm -hmm. There's just so much that goes into that. There really is, I appreciate you noticing. So then everything works. Uh, air conditioning, mm -hmm. did you guys get like the cruise control and that kind of stuff working too? Uh, no cruise on the car, yeah. Cars like this, generally people aren't looking for that feature, but air conditioning, nice stereo. What about cars. ABS? Uh, no ABS. So very, very analog, but very still using much. yeah using modern power. So does it Correct. have traction control? No. Wow. Okay, so you, yeah. it's almost like you just took the best parts of the Hellcat oh, absolutely. and put it onto this. Yeah, and somebody looking for a car like this is wanting that raw experience. Hmm. And then what about the airbox? Is that something you guys designed? Yep, custom design. That's actually a, a 3D printed piece. So of course it passes through the inner engine bay and then picks up the air from just inside the fender. Wow. So it does it have an intercooler? Yeah, exactly. So these the superchargers on these motors is liquid cooled. Mm. Let's talk about the, the wheel and tire combo here. So HRE wheels, mm -hmm. you guys love HREs. Yeah, we, of course. We had great luck with them. It's really a pleasure working with them. Um, and this is the an S101. Uh, we've worked with them to design and manufacture custom wheels uh, for a previous project, which was a really exciting experience because when you get to do a one-off like that, you, there's a lot of expression in that. It looks incredible. And talk about fitment. Wow, those brakes. There's just, <laughs> it's like perfect in terms of just the space just enough space for those brakes. Yeah, and kind of what we touched on, the, the turning radius, it's important to get, of course, your wheel offsets. And when you're working with your wheel offsets to get it to turn, of course, you work with your brake clearances. So it's all, it's all planned. Hmm. So marker lights, this is actually a billet piece. You know, it's, it retains the original shape and original lens. It's obviously got an LED bulb, but this is a custom billet piece, just a little, little accent details on it. Wow. Those mirrors are super cool too. It kind of just exposes a little bit of uh, what, what um, how special this car is. So, and I'm assuming that's something you guys designed? Yeah, correct. Yeah, the mirror itself is a stock mirror. Uh -huh. We just do it up in carbon and paint. Uh -huh. um, we modify the base for better fitment and location. And then the base gasket is 3D printed. So it's moved this way more? Yeah, back a little bit and outboard a little bit. What about the door handle? Is that something you guys do? Again, custom, all billet. So the, the really interesting thing about this is we've gone away from all the mechanics, gone to the elect electromechanical poppers. Oh, what's the advantage of that? Oh simplicity you can integrate it into the system for locking out with less components um, and then just oops, brand new seals yeah yeah just a light light touch it on it it pops really nice too mm -hmm. yeah like I said the seals are new so there's a little tension to get to close but they'll work in um, and then the fuel filler yep custom billet as well um, when I designed it I looked at the original and looked at some of the components we had used in the past and kind of morphed them together and retained some of the tradition. So cool. And then this is still exposed, this carbon. Correct. So what about the taillights? Those are actually stock lenses. Oh. The, the surrounds obviously are Cerakoted, um, but they do have a digital 
light panel in them. So then the stock bumper is metal. Correct. And does it stick out more? Yeah, these bumpers front and rear are tucked. Tucked and trimmed in a little bit. Hmm. Let's talk about the interior. This is where really the magic happens. Um, it is so far from stock. Yeah, I can't correct. Believe. Yeah, there isn't a, a stock component. So we, the truss that you see there is actually a member of the car. The transmission bolts to it with its cross member there, then it ties into the rear cross member at the rear. That's, so that's structural? Correct. So you can see it also ties into the seat pans. The seat pans tie into the frame this. rails. Yep. No way. And then ties into the truss. So it kind of acts as a, a bit of an exoskeleton. So what is this material that I'm seeing here? So uh, that's just a, a regular interior material that we happened upon and that we, uh, that we like. Wow. So That is something else. I mean, even down to this release? Yeah, you know, you, you, using electronic poppers, you have to, you know, in, in case of an emergency, if her, your battery dies, you can just pull the lever and you're out. Wow. Cust custom sill plates. Yeah. Yep, we designed and manufactured some little stamping dies to stamp out those shapes. Just this area alone, there's just so much going on in terms of the different types of materials, right? Mm -hmm. Carbon, I'm guessing that's Alcantara. Yep. This is leather. Correct. And, and then, then this is Cerakota. Correct. And this is the popper. Yep. <laughs> There's so, just so much going on here. I mean, this, this cannot be any further from stock. No, not at all, not at all. What, what a, just this alone is such an art piece and it just integrates with the inside so nicely. Yeah, and you spoke to the color earlier, and now looking at the interior, you can see how that color really comes out and huh. add some so dynamic. It's manual. Yeah, this is a manual car. So then, what a what an interesting looking shifter. So what transmission is it? It's the Tremec T56. So the center console there accommodates obviously the power windows, power locks, power parking brake. All of that is right here. Correct. And then the HVAC up front. At least it has AC. That it does. And that whole piece is billet as well. So that started out as one large chunk of aluminum. You mean where the AC is? The whole thing. Oh, this whole, oh, yeah, this whole center yep. console thing. Yep. Wow. The cage work too is just incredible. It's so clean. Upholstery. What what really blows me away is that this is structural. So the transmission is this where the transmission is bolted to it? Yep, and that's the cross member that's supporting the rear of the transmission. <laughs> I love that. So, I, I love it when there's some design element that is also functional. Very much so. And then then the the front of that truss ties in to a cross member that is part of the complete cage that's hidden behind the dash. So like, what is this little piece of Alcantara here? What uh, does just that do? Continues the trim right here. Oh. So we're going around the roll cage. <sighs> you guys have thought of everything. Even this, look at this tiny little piece that you had to put in your giant autoclave <laughs> just to get it around this. <laughs> well, the nice thing cage. is you have a, a, a large piece that you can trim from for sure. Yeah. You can lay that up individually. So but, then is this glass, all this custom too? Uh, no, the glass is actually OEM shape. Huh. I love all the little design elements that, um, your logo, um, that is just all throughout. And then the carbon tubbing in the back is super cool too. Yeah, the rear quarters. Yeah, the rear. Uh, seat rear backs quarters. are also you know, carbon. So that, yeah, what's going on with these seats? The, it's actually a Recaro GT seat with uh, carbon backing and then obviously reupholstered in our design language and colors. And the steering wheel? Custom, billet piece. Yeah, if you put your hand around it, we've gone with a little thinner to uh -huh. kind of that retro feel to yep. it. And it just has a real nice, delicate feel. All of this stuff. Yeah, tilt wheel. I just hope this gets driven. 
yeah, that is always the dream. Um, yeah. A previous project we did uh, for Ralph Giles, he has put almost 6,000 miles on his car. So this really is a new car. 37 miles on it only? Correct. Brand new car. Yeah, like we talked about, every bolt, every seal, every washer, every bit and pieces. I love the, the gauges too. Yeah, those are classic industries. And even down to the pedals. Yep, billet as well. So then the other side of this, this is the carbon floor. Uh, that's or, a piece of aluminum on top of oh, okay. the foam core that's all support and sound deadening. But then- that, And then underneath that is carbon. That is correct. But th this, this ties into the center structure here. Yep. This is where the seat is mounted. Correct. So it's bolted to the frame rail out here and then ties into the truss in the middle. What an absolute monster of a car. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.